Hey everyone, I'm Fallon Many Wounds. My traditional name is Holy White Buffalo Woman. I am from the Tzatzina Nation and I am your 2021 Calgary Stampede First Nations Princess. We would like to acknowledge the homeland of the many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis people whose elders have walked this land before us and for those that we share this land with today. We are grateful to be able to live in this territory together and to learn from our traditional people as we move forward in reconciliation. Sieska, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all this year at the Calgary Stampede. Working in the front line for over 25 years, um, I've seen a lot of improvement with our kids, uh, being there with them, uh, just having the trust relationship and um, being really effective and uh, uh, improving with the outcomes. And not only that, to have that compassion and love and understanding, even just to listen to them, even that humor. Um, the thing um, I like about my job or you guys' job is we need to go and sort of experience that way of life, connecting to nature, Mother Earth. Also, um, we have an opportunity to, to develop programs within our, our system but if you're working the way I the way I look at it, when you're working with um, First Nations, uh, sometimes they're so lost in the system, like uh, they have been so traumatized with the uh, the the history. So we need to go back and teach them that good journey of uh, that balance with that medicine wheel, spiritually, mentally, physically emotional and in the middle i always say the center is you the person mm -hmm. to be able to love to be able to have that respect honor compassion and uh there's some of the teachings that i like to use also i use that medicine wheel but not only that we have a, a ritual passage where these youth will have a journey to learn to connect with their their spirit now, uh, even having that spirit name, I didn't mention my spirit name. My spirit name is Angel, Okisukusko, a powerful name. And I do connect with the grandmothers. And when I work with these little ones, um, they're, um, I go ground them by nature, you know, Mother Earth, and I make them sit down. And we do prayers. I, I do. I teach them a protocol, just to identify where they came from and who they are as human beings. See, a lot of these little ones are so uh, damaged. Their little souls. Their um. So when the, we as adults need to start empowering, uh, making them warriors, and. I always say we are all gifted and to be able to share that gift with these little ones. Uh, even right now, as I speak, the Enoch is hosting a summer camp, a cultural camp, where there's so many elders you can see there and there's so much ceremony and lots of food to eat. So if any of you have time, if you're working with kids, take them there. They'll be able to see, because I'm a person that has to see them. I'm a visual learner. I have to go experience it. I can talk and talk. It doesn't doesn't comply to me. So if you're working with kids, sometimes they're they're um, they they have a different um how would I call it emotion, meaning spiritually. So what you guys are doing, I'm very proud of you guys that you're stepping up and to bring that healing to the community, to bring healing to for the youth because they need it, and it's um. I always say it start them really young and they'll remember as they get older. So I hope I made some sense. I mean, keep striving. And I always say you'll get rewarded. I always say from the creator because we are our creator's children. And when we work as a team, we make a big difference. So um, there's a lot of communities here in Edmonton that are helping our youth. And again, 
I'm very proud of you guys that you're doing this for the little ones. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi, Masi Cho, uh, Doreen. Thank you, and and Cree and Dene. Uh, it's a great time to introduce our team and what brought us here together today. Uh, again, my name is uh, Tanya Taranjo. I'm the Indigenous Engagement Lead for Alberta Mentoring Partnership, uh, otherwise known as AMP. Uh, it's a new it's a new role. It's only uh, six months old, and there's lots of work to be done in Indigenous mentoring. And I was so happy to come together with this amazing team to uh, bring you some knowledge here today. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Corey. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks, Doreen. That was amazing. Uh, your words of wisdom were so much appreciated. And one thing that you said stuck out to me that we're challenged with making them warriors. I absolutely love that. Um, my name is Corey Dodge. I work for BGC Biggs or otherwise known as the Boys and Girls Clubs, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Edmonton area. Uh, and I am the communication specialist here and very excited to be here. We're very excited to be a part of uh, this campaign with the Alberta Mentoring Partnership uh, and Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Calgary and Bent Arrow in terms of uh, spreading the awareness of uh, the importance of mentorship. And, and there's a need for uh, mentors for Indigenous youth, children and youth. So uh, happy to be here. Excellent, thank, thank you so much, Corey. We're, we're so pleased to partner uh, with you. Uh, Jenna, would you like to say a few words? Yes, for sure, sorry. Um, hi, I'm Jenna Brewer. I'm the Recruitment and Partnership Manager here in Edmonton. I work alongside Corey. And again, we're very uh, excited to be part of this campaign as well. With us being a youth serving agency, we really are, listening to our youth and what they want and what they need in programs within our community and what they're looking for in a big brother or a big sister. Um, we have many kids on our wait list that are looking for an Indigenous mentor and this is really why we've jumped on board with, with AMP to really bring, um, and Ben Taro to really bring awareness to that and and uh, talk about what our youth are, are looking for. So thank you all for being here and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of the day. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, Corey and Jenna. And we had other teammates as well um, who couldn't show up today for today's webinar. We had Jennifer from Calgary, uh, Vernon from Bentero, and uh, Andy is behind the scenes at AMP helping out with our tech and web and Caroline uh, as well. And I want to thank everyone for supporting us and bringing these uh, great messages to you today. I'm just gonna take a few minutes and talk about uh, AMP for those uh, of you not aware and talk about what we'd love to accomplish with my role as Indigenous Engagement Lead. Uh, Alberta Mentoring Partnership, uh, we're a coalition of youth serving agencies, schools, uh, programs across Alberta that support mentoring programs. As well, we want to expand um, our partnerships to, you know, all youth serving uh, agencies, all youth serving programs. And, you know, what we're talking about here today is uh, Indigenous programs. Uh, we're happy to hear about Doreen's um, sharing about the camp at Enoch. We want to hear about more camps like that, uh, more opportunities, more programs that are being offered to Indigenous youth, because we want to amplify them together. You know, it's very uh, difficult to always know what we're doing across the province and uh, I hope to fulfill that role with sharing information, sharing events, uh, sharing opportunities with everyone across, you know, it, as well as sharing what AMP has to offer. Uh, we support agencies with research, uh, resources, training for mentoring, um, we can even list uh, your program in our AMP site where uh, potential volunteers could sign up and find more about your programs and, and sign up right through our site as, as a volunteer that and, you know you can go on to screen their, their application. Um, uh, I think I covered <laughs> all of AMP. I'm, I'm a little nervous and excited and you know, with my new role, it's about uh, bringing more awareness about the need that our Indigenous youth have. 
because like we know that our indigenous youth are struggling that you know not only struggling during covid but you know our youth are struggling with um completing high school that there's a study in 2019 that 60 percent of indigenous youth in calgary didn't graduate and that that was just in 2019 what what can we do to support those youth you know are we are not equally represented in uh, youth going to post-secondary uh, we're not equally represented in the workforce in fact the unemployment rate of indigenous people is twice that of non-indigenous people where we're underemployed unskilled untrained and of course not making um healthy decisions with with all those challenges and barriers in the way and one of the solutions is mentoring. You know, research shows that mentoring supports youth in completing high school, helps them make better decisions, get positive outcomes, and, and transition into adulthood more successfully. And that's why I'm so excited about uh, promoting mentoring and building awareness and, and building capacity across, across Alberta because our stats are terrible. We're we're 6.5% of Alberta's uh, population. We, we make up the third largest Indigenous population in Canada. At 6.5%, though, we make up 50 plus percent in the federal prisons in Edmonton and Calgary. You know, things need to change for our youth. And, you know, us wearing orange shirts, you know, can't ignore the fact that our youth haven't had a lot of great opportunities, you know, but times are changing that since the TRC um, uh, commission and the report 94 calls to action, you know, and even awareness with the 215 children being being discovered in Kamloops and that number growing, you know, I almost feel like we have to have an official website to to keep track because Every day we hear of, of new sites that are confirming new numbers. And, you know, our, our youth have been uh, exploited and, and taken advantage of for too long that we need to lift them up. And if we can bring better programming for our Indigenous youth, you know, with Indigenous mentors and non-Indigenous mentors, you know, our, our Indigenous youth need to walk in both worlds. And, you know, if we could provide resources through AMP and great programs that Corey and Jenna is offering that we could elevate those relationships, then you know, let's work together. Let's let's find those gaps. Let's leverage our resources. I mean, we know that there's not a lot of funding out there. There, there's um, huge gaps in that as well. And if we can elevate what we're able to produce for our youth and for the mentors who are serving them and for the programs then all the better. This is just, this is just the beginning of, of, you know, a great path for improving those outcomes for Indigenous youth across Alberta. I just want to thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to share this information with you, you know, and for joining us to sign up. We have a, a couple of um, videos to follow. I'm going to hand it back over to Corey to talk about uh, this great uh, video about a mentor that we're going to share. Thank you so much, Tanya. And uh, it kind of reminds me is uh, when Doreen was talking, she said, we work better together. And so just uh, really, that's what this is all about, uh, us working together as different agencies in Alberta is just being able to leverage that voice and, and, and make the biggest impact possible. Uh, so yeah, coming up next, uh, we have a, a video from a fellow named uh, Josh Longdo. He's an Anishinaabe, a mentor, playwright, teacher, theater artist, performer, storyteller, grad student, uh, here in Edmonton, and he has a bit of a story to tell in terms of his uh, uh, his background with his Indigenous culture growing up, and what mentoring means to him and his community. And while he had mentors growing up, he didn't necessarily have uh, an Indigenous mentor to kind of walk beside him, uh, especially when he was younger. So here's a quick little video uh, from uh, Josh Longdo and, and his story. Someone who watches over you, someone who guides you, someone who kind of keeps pointing you in um, in a direction that's going to be beneficial to your life and maybe gives you a bit of encouragement um, in 
parts of your life that maybe you don't think you feel are, are confident in yet. Ani, Josh Longdo and Disney Cause, Sogin First Nation and Donjaman. So I'm called Josh Longdo. My people are Anishinaabe. We come from Sogin First Nation out in Treaty 72 territory. And gosh, what am I? I'm a playwright, I'm a teacher, theater artist, uh, performer, storyteller, and um, I guess now grad student. Parents have always uh, kept our Indigenous heritage kind of in the house, in our family, and I'm pretty lucky that way. I remember going to ceremonies, going to powwows, going to round dances all throughout my childhood. And we'd always, you know, we'd always have smudges at our home together. We'd always have moments together. My dad would take us out into the bush. So it's always been kind of there in my life. And I, as a person, have drifted away from it and drifted back to it. And um, I guess that's how life goes sometimes. <laughs> What took me back to it was my parents would try to root me back to it kind of on and off throughout the next couple of years. But the big thing that really got me back into it was I had a really, really big health scare five years ago. And I just remember feeling so helpless and powerless. Um, and as I was changing with these like um, IVs sticking out of my arms and all over my place and bandages ba bandaging them up to go shower and just feeling so helpless I just remember saying speaking to creator I spoke to you know who we call creator or, or the one who creates everything around us and I just kind of took a moment afterwards and realized how long has it been since I've done that um, you know several years five or six years at least since I've actually grounded myself and spoke to creators, so that brought me back into it. From what I understand as well, it's, you know, you don't just have one mentor who watches over you, it's the community. You know, we often hear that phrase, it takes a village to raise a child, and I really, really believe that's true, and that's very much what a lot of Indigenous groups practiced. It wasn't just the parents raising the child, it was, you know, the parents' friends, it was the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents, and many of them often lived together. Uh, and often community members would help raise the kids as well. So the idea of mentorship was a community responsibility rather than a one-on-one -on -one responsibility. But I mean, they also had different relationships with each of those people. Like the way they would interact with their mother is different than how they'd interact with their, their uncle or the grandparent. Those relationships are very, very different. So I mean, while it's a community sense of mentorship, there's still individual relationships with their own unique dynamic. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll definitely start with my parents. I mean, they've rooted me and my little brother in our indigenous ways of knowing pretty much since as long as we could talk. So I really, really owe a lot to them. I've learned a lot through my parents. I still learn a lot through them. And it's not everyone's story, and I'm thankful for that for sure. Um, we had a couple elders that they introduced us to growing up um, that um, that I had a lot of cool relationships with that took me to a lot of ceremonies as a kid, as a teenager. Um, so there was definitely them. I've had a couple allies that are non-Indigenous that have kind of kept an eye on me and encouraged me to bring my Indigenous life into my work uh, as a theater person, as a teacher. And those people are uh, Vern Thiessen, I met him in high school. He's to date my longest teacher. I looked up to him as soon as I met him. And he's always kind of watched out for me. Like even when he moved to New York and was living across Canada, he'd always email me, check in with me. I'd send him stuff I was working on. He'd give me general feedback. And he'd, he'd always invite me to things. I went to this, to two writing retreats with him, one in Italy, one in uh, New York. Um, and that was him kind of dragging me out of my comfort zone to keep learning from him and he hasn't tried to impose his view on me he hasn't tried to like you know tell me how to write he's just carved out space for me so that's why i see him very much as an ally really the right way to do it is to make mistakes to get muddy and to ask for help to realize i don't know everything i'm gonna go and build relationships with the people who may know and then we can have an exchange of knowledge rather than you know, an appropriation of knowledge. While I had mentors, I didn't have like an indigenous mentor watching over me. And I mean, in the society we live in right now, it would have been nice to have someone, I, like one person I could go to, or someone who could watch over me and keep, you know, guiding me in, along that path. Um, 
so yeah, I, I think, you know, because it, it's weird growing up in the time I grew up where I don't see myself in textbooks, I don't see myself in entertainment and media. I think that's changing now, but growing up I didn't see then. It would have been nice to have someone to kind of help me understand that from an earlier age, because even as I age now, I'm still unpacking a lot of that and still relearning a lot of stuff that I didn't even realize had been laid down for me over those years. Uh, I think it's so important because again, I'm lucky that my parents have been able to provide that grounding for me, but I recognize not every family has that and some families have a lot of trauma that they're still working through and some families where they still may be ashamed of their indigenous heritage, they may not embrace it, so these children are growing up uh, not even hearing about it. So I totally think it's a great investment to, to have people volunteer their time to reach out to these youth. Because I mean, it's, there's so much excitement on the horizon right now, and if the youth coming up now have people and mentors uh, to root them in their culture and understanding of who they are, I mean, the sky's the limit. Like They could do so many cool things as they grow up and grow into adulthood and take ownership of their lives. Oh, that was such a, an amazing video that, you know, he fully talked about what, what Indigenous mentoring um, should include, you know, that it needs to include culture. It needs to include that connection, um, the land-based activities, that connection back to the land. You know, even, even if the mentors are not Indigenous, it's important to provide those components so our youth have the opportunity to see themselves, you know, feel like that, that coming home and, and having that safe space. Uh, thank you so much, Corey, for getting that, that video for us and, and um, allowing uh, us to witness his vulnerability with, with mentoring. You're very welcome. Um, we're just starting to put together some resources AMP with in conjunction with our partners, uh, particularly with Mentor Canada, um, resources that you know give you uh, practical tools for setting up Indigenous programming. You know, talking about cultural components, uh, talking about how to engage Indigenous communities. You know that if you don't have an Indigenous person yourself to assist with de developing programs, it's so important to reach out to whether it's a local First Nation or Métis or Inuit community, or if you're, if you're in um, an urban setting, you know, there's Canadian Native Friendship Centers, and there's organizations like Mentero that where Doreen is from, um, you know, many nonprofit Indigenous organizations that are looking, you know, to pair up to talk about uh, their Indigenous youth and, and the programming that we have that you know, as an Indigenous person, we're, we're happy to share our knowledge about our culture and traditions and find ways that we can incorporate that for our youth in their development. Um, the, you may have heard about seven generations and how important it is to us. It, it is critical to us. It, it makes up, uh, you know, the very, the very base of our Indigenous believing that, you know, we need to set up our lives, our our successes, our decisions today for the next seven generations. And, you know, mentoring is an amazing way that we could um, offer that. Um, one of the other programs that AMP supports is called IYMP, you know, very, very uh, straightforward Indigenous youth mentoring. And it's an in school program that uh, started here in Alberta um, and is about to expand across across Canada and they're building upon their lessons learned and collaborating with everyone and I'm going to uh, get that video ready for you to to see as well. Well Tanya gets that video I just wanted to share that you know people on our on our wait list really aren't looking for uh, an Indigenous mentor that has all the answers and that knows exactly what where their heritage lies and, and what activities and, and ceremonies they do. They're just looking to walk alongside someone and take that journey together. How somebody looks like them as well. It might be from 
you know, the same areas. So that's really what's it, what's important um, here as well too. I think I'm going to do that again, just because. Oh, what's your sound? Okay. Hello, welcome to our presentation. Uh, we're from Everactive Schools, and we're sorry we cannot be there with you live, but we are honoring our Indigenous roots and celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day away from the office today. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about um, a program that we've run in the last um, year, uh, uh, two years. Um, which is the Indigenous Youth Mentorship Program, which is also the acronyms are IYMP, which we like to call it. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this presentation on some of the pro uh, on this project that we've done. Um, first, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Cassie Flett, and I am from the Gift Lake Métis Settlement, and I've been working with Everactive Schools for two years now, um, going on my third year coming up in, uh, I think it's August, so I'm really excited about that. Um, we've been fortunate enough to do work around land, land acknowledgement this year, and um, the picture on the right here is a picture of my home community where I, where I grew up in, where I go back to my home fire and kind of restore those roots with language, culture, and my kinship to my family. So um, yeah, this is a picture of back home. Hi, I'm Andrea Dion. I work with Everactive Schools and it's going to, I've been there three years. So I'll be on my fourth year anniversary, um, November. So I am from Muscogee. So I'm a member of the Samson Cree Nation in uh, Muscogee and this picture is of a Sundance ceremony from last year, and it's from my home community. And so when I think about the land and I think about grounding myself, it's about ceremony and about connecting with everything that the land has to offer to us. Um, the strength and prayers and, and cyclical nature of our, our lives. And so I think um, just ceremony is really important as it connects me to my land and it connects me to my strengths. Um, so we're part of uh, the project uh, for Everactive Schools called Resilient Schools. And um, we are so fortunate to have worked with some incredible elders throughout um, this last uh, two years now, maybe a year and a half, and we've had an elders in residence, which um, first came on uh, Russell OJ from Calling Lake um, joined us in the first year, and then in the last few in the last year, Flora Northwest from Muscogee also joined us, and these two elders have been such a huge part of our success in our um, in our great stories of everything we have done and. Our foundation is always reaching out to an elder and always really making sure that we're connecting um, and following protocol and doing things in, in the best way we can. And these are some of the projects they've helped us with, which was the social and physical environment. So they would come in, uh, to our team meetings, some teaching and learnings. Um, they've helped us around health school policies, but the, and then supporting on um, these frameworks in our organization. Um, Andrea? Yeah, so some of the main programs that we offer through the Resilient Schools portfolio is the IYMP, the Indigenous Youth Mentorship Program. We also support with our school communities in addressing culture as a source of wellness, as well as supporting capacity building through sport as a platform for resilience. And then we also have some supportive networks that we're part of, which is the Resilient Schools Networks, which includes school communities from all over Alberta, the Métis communities and all treaty regions in Alberta. And then we also work with partners that serve Indigenous youth. And so that we work with provincial organizations supporting Indigenous health 
for youth through the Indigenous Youth Wellness Collaborative. And those are semi-annual meetings that we conduct and collaborate and share opportunities to engage with our school communities and our youth. And on our overall team, we've had both elders come in and some of our smaller projects, they've been there, been there with us through every step of the way and we're just so thankful we have them. So our, our main funder for Ever Active Schools, although it's a national charity, we do a lot of work with Jumpstart Charities. And so that's been our main funder this year. We've also received funding through Alberta Health. And we were at once um, affiliated with Alberta Teachers Association as a special project under the Health and Physical Education Project. So now we are on our own since last year. And we are so grateful to be grown and be able to offer our programs and services beyond the province of Alberta. So IYMP, so this is a really cool project and um, I like to talk about the three pillars first that we uh, have run in this, in this program, which the first one is um, physical activity, nutrition and connection to culture. So in this program we have young adult health leaders who help um, the mentors, which can be high school students, mentor, which Andrea likes to call the little ones. I like calling them the younger kids. So really developing a program around um, these three pillars. And a physical activity can be anything from um, doing sports or activities in the gym, doing something outside. And we bring in our partner, Alberta Health Services, to do um, sessions on nutrition. And the most important thing is that every we know that every single culture across Alberta is very different and unique. So each community school is allowed to is is allows allows themselves to learn about their culture and teach their culture to young ones and saying, hey, this is how our community practices culture and this is how we want to uh, implement it. So that's so so rich and so um so heartwarming to see is that kids really take take ownership over that. Um, and the main idea of the program is to create that really sense of belonging to who they are, their community, and that and have that circle of support and connection. Um, and with that allows kids to engage with elders, parents, and families, and really bring in that com community based um, community based programming that kids can really uh, have their sense of ownership in. Right. Um, so one of the things that we really like to pride ourselves is the training that we offer to the schools and the school communities we work with. So we do the training and that's based on game sharing, um, lessons from the registered dietitians, as well as an opportunity for the kids to program plan and plan their own initiatives, their own schedule, their own targeted groups of youth um, to work with, as well as an opportunity to look at those activities, those highlights, those three, three main mandates of physical activity, nutrition, and culture. And it's been so exciting to see the teachers and the youth really collaborate as a team and come together with the quality program that's driven through the youth and planned um, through their, their teamwork. Um, here are some, we're just gonna go quickly through some pictures, um, but one of the things that I just talked about this training is you really see youth on the first few hours, they're really shy, they're kind of held back, they don't know what to do. And by the end, they're just like, yep, here we are. This is what we're doing and really take ownership of, you know, like activities that they're involved in and activities that we're doing. At first, they don't want to participate. And by the end, you have youth who you wouldn't even think, you know, like wanting to plan a game, wanting to show a game they know. So this is one of the tra uh, the trainings that we've done in um, Camp Nackman. Um, this is a quote from a high school mentor. Um, the mentor program is good for this community because we teach the kids new things and to participate in activities. And it also teaches the mentors to be good role models for the kids. So we know in our first station communities that often our role models are not, are not as active um, and maybe shy. So what we're looking at is building that capacity and empowering the youth to step out of their comfort zones. And so we look at supporting them through training, as well as an opportunity to kind of check in through the year. 
Um, we've also provided budgets to support transportation because we know that's often an issue in our communities. It's a barrier for a lot of people. And then we also look at opportunities to pro provide nutrition snacks. And um, we really share a lot of games with them. So this is some of our training that we hosted over in Nordic at the Frontier Lodge. And it was a really great opportunity because not only are kids taken away from their school community for training, but there are other school communities. Oftentimes we've had schools up to about four or five different schools where kids are learning to be empowered from other examples from other youth. And then they're also creating networks and friendships along the way. This is um, a training program that's also from Nordeg. And so we've been working with, um, originally it started with three different communities in all of Alberta. And in 2019 and 2020, we expanded to over 33 different unique Indigenous school communities. It was our expansion year. It was very successful. We originally wanted, and we thought 25 would be aiming high. But the program success and the, the buy-in from school communities was so great that we exceeded the grant expectations. Um, even with IOIMP there, as uh, with EverActive, we offer other supports. So things like the AMA Friend Club, um, we were able to tap into those networks of the IOIMP project to um, bring kids, for example, if there's any like coaching training or any events that Everactive School's running, like we just had um, the virtual event to Resil the Resiliency Summit or Educators Conference, like Shaping the Future and just different things that our organization is running. We're allowed to tap into those youth mentors or those young adult health leaders and, you know, bring them on board for more opportunities for mentorship and um, <clears throat> to, you know, gain more skills. So that's one of the, like, where our relationships grow on a deeper level and year over year. So that's always awesome to, to see. Um, here's just a few pictures of some of our trainings that we've had. And they're so fun, so fun. <laughs> we always look back on these pictures. We're like, oh man, this is so fun. I missed it. I can't wait to go and do these trainings again. Um, and maybe as for time, we'll just run through this really quickly since everything had to kind of turn on to an online delivery. Um, some of the things we did was like our resilience summit and we created um, a Still I Rise conference, basically just something the kids can have and to do now. And I think when we were talking, we we're like, oh, maybe we'll just, even if 50 kids show up, that's awesome but we had over a thousand youth um, register and attend, which was awesome. And we had some incredible speakers like Alicia Cardinal, Evan Zillowoman, Devin Buffalo, and Lanny Hool and Riley um, Many Bears, who gave some really awesome, awesome presentations. Um, and we've also have a Facebook page that's been kind of running for the last, the last year since since uh, COVID happened, we're doing the online delivery. So as everyone, we had to pivot to online delivery, but can't wait to do some in-person stuff. For sure. We miss our school communities. Cassie and I were probably the most traveled community partners in our organization. And so we really miss connecting in person in face-to-face -face with our youth. I miss the students. I miss the kids. I miss the amazing community champions we get to partner with. Um, yeah, this is our one-day virtual event, Still I Rise, and it was a huge success, and we're excited to kind of expand and do more, and just I'm excited to even relaunch the program, the IYMP program, which is, is so fun, it's so empowering, and youth love it, the young adult leaders love it, schools love it, we love it, so <laughs> it's been super fun. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining uh, Thank you so much for tuning in with us. Um, we appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're sorry we couldn't be there, but we're always happy to share and, and speak about the program we do and the opportunities to engage with ever active schools in a further and deeper level. Thank you so much, everyone. Our emails are below. If you would like to contact us, we're happy to chat. So 
enjoy the rest of your day and yeah have fun celebrating indigenous people say thank you hi hi Another great, great story about an Indigenous youth mentoring program happening here in Alberta. I, I could listen to Cassie and Andrea talk about the program all day about, you know, uh, having a holistic approach, having, having the youth guide uh, what they want to do and have input into their activities. Um, I hope we, we've given you some examples of, of you know, what Indigenous mentoring uh, program could look like, or, or any youth programming that can have a mentoring aspect. You know I, know, I know we shared a lot about Indigenous culture and talking about the importance of Indigenous mentors, but uh, as well, non-Indigenous non mentors are looking to go down this journey as well, that they want to learn about Indigenous culture, that uh, they're interested in history and, and interested in uh, acts of reconciliation. And uh, I'm a firm believer that, you know, by a non-Indigenous signing up to mentor an Indigenous youth, that itself is an act of reconciliation. Uh, reconciliation is about um, building better relationships. And what better relationship could you not build than, than a mentoring relationship with a youth and, and support that youth? Uh, so uh, in our, in, in our um, culture, humor is uh, so important. We, we love to laugh. We love to make fun of ourselves and other people like so much. Um, we're the jokesters. If, if, if you've ever worked in an Indigenous organization, like it's all day laughs and jokes and who's going to get one over the other person. And, and gosh, if you have a birthday in an Indigenous organization, like don't ever trust the gifts you're going to get because chances are those gifts are all going to be gay gifts. <laughs> and it's just the way that uh, our people have, have healed and, and, you know, try to find the good in everything. And um, with that, we have uh, two... Uh, indigenous comedian sharing sharing some laughs with us and you know um nothing's offensive in here but you know the humor you might not get if you're not indigenous and i just encourage you to be open-minded and you know understand that there's all types of humor out there and um please enjoy Everybody, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, oh, please, please sit down, sit down. That is so unnecessary. Wow, a standing ovation on a Zoom show. That's a first for me. I want to thank you for that. That's very kind, but totally unnecessary. My name is Don Kelly. You might recognize me from watching some shows on APTN, and if you do recognize me from watching those shows, I just want to say, oh, you're the one. Nice to meet you after all these years. Thanks for supporting my career. Very much appreciate that. It's Indigenous Peoples Day. I want to make sure I start in the right way. So I'm in Ottawa. I want to acknowledge that I am on the traditional territory of the Algonquin people. I also want to acknowledge that the wallet I'm holding in my hand belongs to my camera guy. What's that? Are you getting your wallet back? No, no, no. I'm just acknowledging that this is your wallet. <laughs> you don't get it back. Don't you know how these acknowledgements work? Just pay attention. So I am in Ottawa. I live here, our nation's capital, government center. I'm always reminded how helpful the government is to us, right? I mean, they always helpfully classify us and categorize us and control us. It really takes a lot of pressure off of us, right? Like, for example, I live in Ottawa, I don't live on my reserve, so right away I am what the government classifies as an off-reserve Indian. I hate that term. 
I, I much prefer free range. Locally grown and organic. And let's face it, biodegradable. I do like cities though. I've always enjoyed cities. In fact, my spirit animal is a giant tiger. I might move back to my reserve though. I had a great business idea, right? I wanna go back to my reserve and open a legal cannabis shop because I've got the perfect name. I'm gonna call it the Token Indian. <laughs> get it? You get that? I know it's a bit of a groaner, but that's a special joke for Indigenous Peoples Day. One of the questions I get when I meet non-Indigenous people is they wonder, how does an Ojibwe and Anishinaabe have the name Don Kelly? Well, Kelly, that is the name on my dad's side, the Anishinaabe side. It goes back like more than a hundred years, right? It's a history lesson. It goes back to when the government wanted to set up reserves. So they came to all our communities. They want to make a list of everyone so they can keep track of them. So what would typically happen is some Indian agent from the government would go to my great, 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 great grandfather and he'd say, and your name is? And my great, 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 great grandfather would respond, hey, mom, and he'd say, okay, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, we're spelling it Kelly. You can pronounce it any way you want. Knock yourself out. Kelly. Yeah, just part of our history. You know, it's, it can be a little colonial. I get that a lot too from non-Indigenous people. They always ask me, is there racism in Canada? You know, there's, there's, there's racism everywhere and Canada can just be a little weird sometimes. It can be a little more subtle. Like I remember one year I'm giving out the Halloween treats. Love doing that. There's a ring on my doorbell. I open the door. There's this cute little girl, right? Four, five years old. I don't know, just big smile, rosy cheeks. It's probably her first Halloween, right? She's just looking at me smiling, but She's in the Indian princess costume, right in front of me, right? Some big, ridiculous cardboard feather. She's got some wig with braid. She's got paint on her face. It makes her look cheap. I just snapped, couldn't help it. I was like, what are you supposed to be? And she's looking at me, I'm an Indian. <laughs> I said, oh really? Well, then I'm a white guy. And I took her treats. Hey, sorry, little girl. You want to play the part? You got to pay the consequences. A little history lesson for you right there. The other thing I get in the city is stereotypes, right? And they're different. Like racism's got some hate to it. Stereotypes are just these weird generalizations. Remember there was a protest once on Parliament Hill, right? Some climate change thing. I'm just walking by, minding my own business, and, and I see this protester. She's like one of these 19-year-old uh, angry students, right? She's, uh, she, she's scowling, and she's got a t-shirt that says radical environmentalist. You know, and, and you know the type. You see him everywhere. She's got like bright pink hair, a sleeve of tattoos up and down each arm, piercings everywhere, like a real natural earth mother, right? I don't know, I'm just walking by, and she just gets in my face. She's like, do you support the environment? Do you recycle? Do you take public transit? I'm just, whoa, whoa, I'm overwhelmed. I'm like, well, you know, just as a, as a First Nations person, I was always taught that and she jumps in, right? She goes, you're First Nations? Oh my gosh, that is so cool because I'm vegan. What? You know, I'm, I don't know what to say. I'm like, oh, you're vegan clan. Well, it's nice to meet you. There aren't many of you left, so it's good to meet one, right? And then she realized what she did. She got kind of a bear. She backtracked. She goes, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stereotype. She says, I, I, I'm just, the fact is I'm vegan. And I know you native people have a special relationship with animals, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we eat them. <laughs> we, we love animals. Oh yeah. Deep fry them, a little hot sauce. Thank you, creator. Oh, I didn't have the heart to tell her there's an old joke in Indian country that uh, vegetarian is a native word that means can't hunt. <laughs> right? So it's an old one. 
All the indigenous people know it. Non-indigenous people out there, if you want to use it, go ahead. It's not mine. You're not stealing from me. I know, far be it from a white person to steal from a native person. Hey, don't worry about it. You're not doing that. You are one of the good ones, you know? And I don't want to play on the stereotypes, but I do my bit for the environment. It's not just because I'm First Nations. You, you want to leave the world a better place for the next seven generations, right? I did Earth Hour a couple of years ago. You know, Earth Hour, it's the last Saturday in March. And between 8.30 and 9.30 p.m. at night, you turn off all your lights to show your support for the environment. So I did that between 8.30, 9.30 p.m., flicked off all my lights. And I'll tell you something, worst night of my life, no one was supporting me. People were actually yelling at me. The other drivers are honking at me like, come on. <laughs> it's Earth Hour. Don't, don't flick your lights out. You turn them right off. Show your support. So, anyways, I think I did my bit for the, the environment. I took a few cars off the road. One of them might have been a Prius. How could I tell? It was so dark. Anyways, I am trying to be more responsible. I, uh, I settled down. I, I got married. Not sure if there's anyone else out there in the fight club. I don't know, my wife may be using me though. I think she thinks that if we get divorced, she gets half of North America. <laughs> we'll see. That's a whole other kind of land acknowledgement, right? Once again, I gotta sign it away. Anyways, thank you so much for uh, tuning in and watching the show. I gotta get going. I got things to do. After all, land don't claim itself. Happy National Indigenous Peoples Day. Miigwech. Your next act is uh, my former boss and also uh, at the Courier Company and also a, a, a very dear friend of mine who uh, travels all around the country. You've heard her on CBC Radio. She uh, is a, a mainstay of the Ottawa comedy scene here, originally from Saskatchewan, now here for you uh, this afternoon, all the way from the south end of Ottawa. A big hand, everybody, for Jen Hayward, everyone. Hi, everybody. All right, I heard. Escapel Lodge clapping and no one else. I see your mutes on. I see it. All right. Don't worry. I'm not as a... Trevor's like, I love it. And then he, it's like he ducks. He's like doing his comedy and normally would like walk off the stage, but it's like he's doing that stare thing to go. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'm one of those people who has not stopped working since the pandemic, meaning I come in every day to the office because we're essential. Uh, I don't get any extra money or anything, but that's okay. Uh, but I do hope you enjoy the cupcakes. And if you're at Cupcake Lounge, we really value you, Trevor. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't work for me anymore. Uh, he's, he's a successful comedian now. But no, I, uh, I'm a comedian, uh, but I'm a former bureaucrat. That's right, everyone. I used to work for Correctional Services Canada. I can say that now. Uh, when I worked there, I wasn't allowed to tell people. Uh, by applause, is anyone else with the CSC right now? All right, I got feedback on some of well, Anyway, uh, so I don't work with the federal government anymore. Uh, I escaped. Boom, there's your best joke of the day. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I enjoyed working for the government uh, when I traveled a lot, and then I adopted children and couldn't travel, and then they put me in strategic planning, and I said I can't do 30 more years. Uh, uh, plus, even though I was an AS7, I just wasn't making enough money to pay for my Starbucks addiction, <laughs> so I had to leave for greener pastures, so I became an entrepreneur and now make half the money, but I'm happy now. Um, we all make our choices, right? Um, so I'm originally from Saskatchewan, as Trevor mentioned. Very much a prairie girl, even though I've lived in Ottawa for 13 years. Uh, uh, born and raised in Saskatchewan. I'm Métis. Uh, Right, I'm you. Uh, so I'm traditional Ukrainian, not on or sorry, traditional Métis, not like whatever Quebec is doing. Boom! I'm sorry, it was political. Uh, anyone who works for Indigenous understands. Uh, but anyway, no, I am. I'm from Saskatchewan, and so I'm Métis, and I'm Ukrainian. So I'm a Ukrainian. Ah, uh, but I'm bum. Uh, joke was funnier when I was. That was the word we used, but we changed it five times since then. I've been a comedian for. 20 
years. Um, <laughs> no, no, I'm Métis. I'm from Saskatchewan. And two years ago, like this is how proud I am of my, of my home, my home province, is two years ago, they had an entire tourism campaign. They're like, we're going to do this. We're going to bring all the masses. And so their entire, it was an Instagram campaign where people would take pictures of themselves in canola fields. That's right, everybody. You come to Saskatchewan, walk on someone's private property, which only works if you're not Indigenous, and take a selfie of yourself. It's the worst plan ever. And it was so offensive as someone from Saskatchewan to say that what all we have is canola. Hello, hello. We have wheat as well. We have a lot of <laughs> Many options. We also have the writers, and, and that's it. Uh, we would have, like, we could be in a deficit of $3 trillion, and if we needed to send the writers money, we would find a way to do it. We will not cure poverty, but Saskatchewan Rough Riders, that is, that's our, that's in our heart. I don't even like football, but I'm a writer fan. Go green. Uh, so I love this is like, this is all like one family, comedian, indigenous. Trevor used to work for me. Vinny and I go back years. Uh, like 10 years ago, I did call me up there five years ago. Uh, I was there again. And uh, it's so funny when we think about what, what we think the North should be and what it isn't. Uh, when I was up there, uh, the big debate was on personal freedoms, but it wasn't a mask debate. It was whether they should have to wear a cart or seatbelt. <laughs> you know, I was like, wow, we had that 20 years ago. But the other debate they were having, which fascinated me, was whether they were going to have a recycling plant or not. And I was just like, whenever I had been ingrained in the South uh, to think about recycling, we were basically told to think of the North. We were like, come on, everything's melting up there. And they're up there like, we're good, guys. We could take a little bit of warmth. I'm just going to throw this aerosol can out. So it was a different world. Too political. I'll move on. Uh, so I thought in, in lieu of doing some of my normal stuff, I'd take this opportunity to tell a couple of stories from when I worked uh one of the blessings of the job that I had when I worked in the government, I make a little fun because I can, uh, and, uh, but I, um, I worked uh, with 134 elders. And what a blessing to find out that the West isn't best. It took me a long time to figure it out. I moved there, hired into this position, really good at what I did, but all my teachings were in the Cree basis. Uh, and so sometimes you'd go and you'd experience new ceremonies and it was a neat, thing to do. And sometimes I'd resist because I'm not that spiritual person, but the elders, they just knew that they needed to teach me something, whether I wanted to or not. And so one time we were doing, it was an indoor sweat. I've never seen it had to do with thread and, and a star. And it was a two day ceremony, a lot of talking. I won't lie. Our people <laughs> like to talk. We like to feel and we like to laugh, but we like to sit and talk. And so it was a two day ceremony. And so the first day was a lot of ceremony and ritual uh, and then talking. And then the elder would dream of your spirit animal. And this was something I had resisted because in the West it's been a different way. But I have enough of an ego from the prairies and being a young punk and all the things at the time that this is going to be great. I said, like, I'm finally going to be validated with the right animal, right? So I'm like, bring on the bear. Like, I, like there's just no doubt in my mind that I'm a bear. Like, all night, I'm like, yeah, the elder's dream and just, you know, he had 50 people to dream about, but obviously it was about my bear. And so he goes around and he's like, and you're this and you're this and you're this. And he gets to me and he goes, Jen. You're a mouse. <laughs> a mouse. I was like, here's some more tobacco. We can do better than that. Oh, uh, what? I'm a mouse. And uh, and he said, he says, Jen, a mouse has the ear of the bear. And he says, you are not meant to be the top of the government, but you are meant to influence. And I was like, all right, so can I have funny clothes? Like I just want, you know, <laughs> mice aren't fun. Uh, but so uh, it's always about, uh, you don't know what your role in society is, but the elders certainly help. Instead of trying to be too high in the government, uh, I got out. Uh, that's what I took from that. <laughs> Uh, but another time, and uh, elders, they have their own sense of humor. Uh, the, I was with uh, one of my favorite elders uh, from Kingston, and uh, he was giving me a teaching for Thanksgiving. And I had heard of this one before, but uh, I said, okay. And he says, okay, so it's Thanksgiving. 
you are going to take a little bit of the meal and you're going into the backyard with your eldest son and he's going to bury it. And then at night, it's a thanks to the great spirit bear. And the great spirit bear will eat it. And then it's a giving thanks back to the universe. And I like that was the most special, like it was such a an honor and such an, a, a teaching like that really felt deep because gratitude is something that I, I practice every day. But then I looked at him for a long time and he's like, what, Jen, what? Well, you don't want to do it? I said, no, I want to do it. But does the spirit bear actually come down? And he, like, is this like from a transmitted morph? Like, is there an actual spirit bear that comes and eats the food? And the elder looked at me and he said, no dummy, the animals do. It's a metaphor. And uh, so I love working with the elders. Uh, and it's a good practice for everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed having some laughter with those two uh, comedians. They are uh, so special. And, you know, for those of you who are not aware that, you know, we have some amazing uh, indigenous uh, comedians out there that, you know, I hope that give you a little bit of insight that there, there are. And, uh, you know, uh, you might be aware of uh, Don Bernstick here in Alberta, but there, there is many, there's many, many who, who share laughter with us. And, you know, I just thought it was really important that, you know, when we talk about um, Indigenous mentoring and, and things that have happened, um, you know, in the last, last two weeks with residential schools, that it was really important that we take that time to uh, have have some laughs together and and thank you for the positive feedback and I, I was hoping that the people from Saskatchewan didn't mind too much I was like to me like being Edmonton you know back and forth Saskatchewan Alberta or like you know we're better and they just go along with it <laughs> no I'm just kidding I'm just <laughs> carrying it on but thank you thank you guys I think they're they're both uh really fantastic but we're just going to take a few minutes to wrap up before we do I have one more screen share it's a um, it's late breaking uh resource tool that is released today especially for uh National Indigenous Day this is released through Mentor Canada I work with Mentor Canada in the exact same role, uh, part-time, two days a week. And what we did was uh, we took a power of mentoring resource and we um, gave it some Indigenous flair. And if you're not familiar with power of mentoring, what we do at Mentor Canada is we take a corporation and then within that corporation, they volunteer for a 90-minute mentoring session and we pair up with a youth-serving organization. And before uh, I joined the team, their materials were very corporate. And we had this great idea to, you know, really honor Indigenous storytelling. So this is one of the guides that they get uh, during this event to walk them through the conversation, uh, you know, getting to know each other, sharing who they are, and following up, like uh, keeping in touch over in LinkedIn. So I encourage you, if you haven't signed up for Mentor Canada's newsletter, uh, please do so or go to Mentor Canada's site after, um, after our session today or anytime this month. Uh, they are released to the public as of today and we're really proud to, you know, pair up with AMP and um, just events, mentoring for Indigenous youth, you know, just really providing opportunities and and collaborating together. Um, lastly, if you haven't signed up for AMP's newsletter, please do so as well. We have the Indigenous Art Contest going on right now in uh, Alberta. Uh, it was uh, really fantastic to be able to offer this for all Indigenous students. Uh, so you can go to our website for that more, more information on that. And, um, you know, just thank you for taking time to be with us today on this special day, National uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, and let us, letting us celebrate Indigenous people across Alberta, uh, having some laughs, having that beautiful prayer from the elder. And uh, please uh, follow up, follow up with us if you have any questions. Um, Corey had to step away, but 
Uh, I'm gonna pass it off to Jenna to share a few words. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much everybody for attending. Um, please, if you know anybody who's interested in being a mentor, um, you can do that with our agency at bgcbigs.ca or go through um, AMP as well as they have um, options there as well. Um, again, thank you for joining us. We hope to see some uh, mentors sign up for our youth and this was a really great way to celebrate um, celebrate a very special day today. So thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great uh, feedback. Thank you, everyone. The one question about how do you sign up if you're a non-Indigenous mentor? Well, you can go directly to Edmonton uh, B BGC Big site that uh, has 50 youth on the white site. Thank you, Jenna. You can come to Alberta Mentors and search your area, and it'll show you agencies that are listed. And if you're still not sure, uh, you're welcome to email me. Uh, I'll quickly put my email in the chat box here. And this is just the beginning. Please uh, join us on this journey. And I even seen uh, some people from Ontario. You know, we want to team up as well. That really uh, Indigenous mentoring is needed across, across Canada. And being from Mentor Canada, I'll just put on my other hat and we'll team up that way. <laughs> but with that, you know, uh, gifting you uh, 10 minutes back of your time. Uh, everyone have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, keep learning and uh, reach out to us. We're, we're here to support. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you so much.